Good evening, everybody. You know, Matt, you're, I know you're in the wings there. I don't know if you saw that you made it into my open. There's a shot of you in my open. That's a, a Matt from Greater uh, Idaho Movement here in Oregon, or there in Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, on our show pretty regularly. And I think that's funny. I just looked and went, oh, I forgot I put that shot in there. You guys want to thank you. We're going to talk about this Greater Oregon. There's been some new movement. Um, and uh, we don't have, we'll have results that'll be old by the time this airs, but you guys are savvy. You can find this out, but I want you to understand more about what's going on with this. Our sponsors tonight are Chris Dental Family Dentistry, where everyone is welcome. Uh, if you're looking for dentures, you're looking for tooth care, Dr. Bratman believes in freedom. He believes in people having their voice. He believes if you want to be trans or gay or straight or lesbian or whatever, it doesn't matter as long as you're a good person. And you can celebrate that, but don't expect everybody else to be in the same boat. We all have to have things differently. We all get to decide our own fate. Mm -hmm. And he's there for you and your, and your, and your tooth care. Um, also, Fairway uh, Mortgage. Uh, Greg Hinkle is a local Montana Helena uh, mortgage broker. And, uh, or he's a loan officer, excuse me. And he also is from Oregon and Washington. So he can do Oregon, Washington, and Montana. And he's located right here in Helena. If you need more information, we can get that for you. He also is one of our sponsors of our show tonight. And Montana Oral Surgeons and also Implant Center in Helena. We'll be hearing from them a little bit later in the cast as well. So let's get right to the topic here. I want to bring Matt on. Hey, Matt, how you doing? I'm doing well, Rick. How are you? I'm good. So let's... Um, Greater Idaho Movement, maybe do a Reader's Digest condensed version of what you're trying to do, and then we'll update folks on Because you've got some opposition now. That always means you're threatening two yeah. people, not threatening people, but threatening two people. Um, everybody gets to choose whether they're threatened, and, uh, and uh, you obviously are stirring a hornet's nest of some kind. So explain to people the idea behind the Greater Idaho Movement. Yeah, so Greater Idaho, uh, it, we're a movement of self-determination, and, and the basic idea is that Eastern Oregon counties belong in Idaho. Eastern Oregon counties and the people that live there are far more similar to Idaho than they are to Western Oregonians, uh, economically, socially, politically, and, and they would prefer to have state-level government coming from Idaho than they would from Oregon. So every election... Eastern Oregon is very conservative. It votes very, very conservatively and, and votes for Republicans. The west side of Oregon votes heavily Democratic. But because of the numbers in Western Oregon, the state level government of Oregon is, is whatever Western Oregon wants it to be. And, and so people in Eastern Oregon have spent decades voting for a certain kind of government that they haven't gotten. And, and instead, they get a government that they don't want, that they don't make sense for their communities and that they're not voting for. So our movement came along about three years ago and said, we know we have this huge urban rural divide. Western Oregon's a very different culture than Eastern Oregon. And, and that causes a lot of tension because we share this state government. What if we took the border between Idaho and Oregon and simply moved that west to the Cascade Mountain Range, which is where the actual cultural divide in our state is. Right. Uh, you know, the west side of Oregon is, it's a different uh, geography, it's a different culture, it's a different economy, it's different politics than the east side. And, and borders can be moved, Rick, and, and you know, because you've had me on and, and most people um, who've heard about our movement understand this, a border is an imaginary line. It, it was placed there to group people and, and make their lives better. In the case of Oregon and Idaho, that line was placed there 164 years ago when there was less than 50,000 people in the state of Oregon. It made sense 164 years ago. It doesn't make sense where it's at now. It, it causes problems instead of solving problems. We could move that border, get Eastern Oregon counties into Idaho, solve the urban rural divide. And it also saves Western Oregonians. They're subsidizing the people of Eastern Oregon. It, it, it would benefit Idaho to have those folks and the people in Eastern Oregon, but it also benefits the Western part of Oregon. I think, I, I think what's interesting is that people are just so, no, this is Oregon. This is how it's always been. Well, but, but things change. Oregon, when it was a territory, was all of these states around us. I mean, it was huge. And then they started dividing things up into, I mean, Washington, Western Washington, probably should be involved with Idaho as well, because they're not anything like the, or excuse me, Eastern Washington, because yeah. they're not anything like Western. It's just the, over time, things have changed, but bigger than time and the change really is the attitude in Salem. 
Yeah. So, so as our cultures have drifted further apart, so we have this urban world divide, and and the west side of Oregon is is more urban, and it's that Portland metro area. You know, there's two million people that live in that Portland metro area, and and there's enough numbers there that they dictate. What they want is what they get at the state level, whether that's ballot measures, whether that's the legislature, whether that's the governor. Um, and our two cultures are getting further and further apart. You know, there was a time in Oregon where the big arguments were about, you know, tax levels and, and government services. Now we're talking about completely different things, you know, that, that are ways of life, basic values you know, basic ways of seeing the world. Um, these two cultures are drifting further and further apart. And because of that, you're having all sorts of political tension. The, the, the west side of the state wants to force policy on the east side of the state that we don't want, that, that we don't, doesn't match our values and that we don't think makes our communities better. And so that's causing problems. And, and we are a movement about solving problems. We want to solve this issue. We want to solve this urban rural divide. We want to lower political tension. And as you mentioned, what our movement does, what our solution does is it makes a win-win for almost everybody involved. The west side of the state gets government that they want. They get to keep their tax dollars at home instead of subsidizing eastern Oregon. Eastern Oregonians get the government they want. Idaho gets 400,000 like-minded voters, economic boom to their state. It, it's, it's really a win-win for everybody. Well, except for the politicians. Because, you know, their, 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 their egos get bruised and all of a sudden the state they represent is smaller and, and you know, and, and where, where, where. Um, yeah. And, and interestingly enough that you mentioned that, Rick, because what we've found or what we've seen over the course of doing this is that when you ask voters, when you ask people, there's been polling done in Idaho and they asked the people of Idaho by Trafalgar Group and they said, would you want to take these 15 Oregon, Eastern Oregon counties in? if you knew that they voted like you do and they would not be an economic drain on you and voters in Idaho said over two to one. Yes, we think that's a good idea. They asked voters in Northwestern Oregon survey USA did a poll and they asked just your everyday citizen in Northwest Oregon. Do you think the state of Oregon should have this conversation about moving the border and what that might look like? 68% of people in Northwest Oregon said, yes, we ask voters directly in Eastern Oregon. Do you want your elected leaders to look into this? And we're winning elections. Our average, even with this latest uh, um, election that we're having that's really close, our average across Eastern Oregon is 59% uh, wins. So when you ask people, people understand the problem. They understand right. that the west side's different than the east side. They understand that Portland policy doesn't make sense for Burns, Oregon. So the people get it. The people understand it is our elected leaders, our politicians that are uh, uh, a little slower to come along. And, and there's other factors involved there why exactly what you were saying. Well, we don't want to lose, lose part of our state or, you know, this or that, but that's, that's really a like leader problem, not a citizen problem. So shouldn't we be looking at what makes people's lives better rather than what makes, what strokes a few politicians egos, you know, and, and now here's Absolutely. your problem though. Don't they, don't, it doesn't Congress have the final say. And so you have to get the backing or you, it'd be preferable to have the backing of Oregon's legislature and, or, the congressional and senators from our state? Yeah, so we do have to. So the process for moving a border is you have to get the two states to agree. And, and so that's going to require the two state legislatures to come together and say where the border is isn't making sense. It's not helping people. It's actually causing problems. It'd make more sense and be better for everybody if we moved it to here. So we got to get the Oregon legislature and the Idaho legislature on board. The Idaho legislature is is essentially already there, Rick. So we had a memorial that we introduced uh, in the Oregon House or the Idaho House, excuse me, by Representative Boyle, who was on yeah. your intro there. Uh, yeah. And you had her on the show and she's awesome. And she totally gets greater Idaho and how that makes sense for Idaho. Um, so she introduced a memorial in the Idaho House. It passed the Idaho House pretty handily. It moved to the Senate. We had the support in the Senate. Um, we kind of ran out of time in the Idaho legislature. They kind of put it on the back burner because Oregon wasn't doing anything. But there's a lot of support in Idaho for this to happen. And the Idaho legislature is essentially ready to have this conversation whenever we can get the Oregon legislature on board. Um, on the Oregon side, we have not had as much traction. We have uh, elected leaders that have dug in their heels and said, we're not going to have this conversation. This is kind of a non-starter. Um, and, and so that's kind of where we're at in Oregon. So they've obviously forgotten that they're the voice of us. So we, the people, get to decide whether we want that 
that discussion. So let's talk a little bit about that when we come back. And also I want to talk about the Wallowa County. That was the latest election. Mm -hmm. And I also want to talk about you're starting to be a force to be reckoned with because you're getting some opposition. I mean, you've had opposition, but now you're getting people that are paying for opposition, which is always a good thing because that means after three years, they're starting to take you seriously. So hang on just a second. Still get patients once in a while. I had a patient the other day that came in and uh, said that they weren't being able to see, be seen at their office that they were currently at because they didn't get a vaccination. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, um, and so a lot of my patients actually come to us because uh, I back the blue. I, f- I believe in freedom of speech and 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 freedom to decide if you want to put something in your body or not. So uh, we have a like 90 percent of my patients, and like I accept everybody. I don't care if you have purple hair. I don't care if I don't. I don't care if you're transgender. I don't care. Like I'm accepting of everybody. I don't care. I don't, I don't really care as long as I, to me, it's more important if they're just a good individual. Well, I'm Jason Fleshman. I am one of the co-owners of Montana Oral Surgery. I'm an oral maxillofacial surgeon and I've been practicing for almost 25 years. I mean, this is a big country. And, and then the people who are here um, wouldn't want to be anywhere else, you know? They'll die for their state. Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want to live in a state where people are that passionate about where they live? I replaced teeth with dental implants. I removed cysts and tumors from patients' faces and jaws. Um, I perform oral and maxillofacial trauma surgery, fixing people's broken jaws, cheekbones, eye sockets. Perform office space oral surgery and anesthesia. I remove teeth. I replace teeth with dental implants. It's no joke. Yeah, you don't mess around. You don't put up with this harsh environment. This is like the last great place, personally. And then, you know, if you're not from Montana, you probably don't understand. Um, but if you're here, you know. People in Montana remind me so much of people in Eastern Oregon. Um, you know, just, Live and let live, you know, we don't want you. And, you know, and I've done so many stories where what, one of the things that people don't understand, I think in the West part of Oregon is that, you know, take care, take care of your area and leave people and let people in Eastern Oregon take care of theirs. And for generations, they've been, Western Oregon's been coming out and lawmakers here, we'll show you the best way to do this. When you don't even know what they do for a living, you wouldn't know how to raise cattle if somebody came in and showed you. I mean, they, you know, they and so the arrogance of them coming out and telling people in Eastern Oregon, whose families have owned property there for 150, 200 years. Here's how you guys can do it better. You, and how it feels to many people like relatives that I have back there is, oh, you stupid idiots here. We'll show you how to do it. And you can't treat people like that decade after decade after decade before they get frustrated. And it's not the Oregon that they love. It's the land that they love and their it's, family's property. That's right. Know? And it's their communities. There is a culture and it's a different culture. You know, like you said, the culture of Montana is the culture of, of Idaho and it's a culture of Eastern Oregon. It's these big open spaces. It's rural, it's uh, independence, it's live and let live. It's a different culture than the West side of Oregon. And, and that's okay. It's okay for these places to be different, but we do get this, this frustration and this tension when, people that live hundreds of miles away with a different culture, different value set, try to force their policy and way of life on us. That's you're going to have issues. And that's what we've got. So Matt, do you think the reaction to the pandemic was helpful to you guys actually? I think the reaction, yeah, absolutely. I think the reaction to the pandemic just supercharged our movement. There's, there's been an urban rural divide in Oregon for as long as I've been alive. Um, But the pandemic, especially the response and the heavy handedness from Western Oregon onto the rest of the state was so severe that, that the people in Eastern Oregon just, you know, they just could not stand any longer to, to, right. to be living this way. And we saw things, you know, during the pandemic. So, so, you know, people remember, you know, two, three years ago, they were shutting down businesses. They were shutting down churches, schools. Kids were forced into masks when they did go back to schools. I remember an Oregonian article that came out early in the pandemic and, and they interviewed somebody in Eastern Oregon. And it was a woman who owned four different small businesses. I and they had this. not. Oh, you froze, Matt. 
Come there. sign back. Uh oh, did we cut out a little bit there? Yeah, yeah go back to what you were thinking. You're yeah, I was just saying that. there there was an article. I remember reading an article in the Oregonian right at the beginning of the pandemic, and, and I, I believe it was Harney County, and it was a woman who owned four small businesses. And the state came in, they shut down every single one of her small businesses. And there had not been a single coronavirus case in that county yet. Yeah. It, there was, it was so heavy handed and that didn't exist in other states. Idaho had a short shutdown. Kids were out of school for a short amount of time. Then they were right back in school. People were back in churches. Mask mandates were optional. You know, across Eastern Oregon, we had these huge school board revolts where we had 100, 150 parents show up to these school board meetings, which nobody would ever, you know, these school board meetings had never seen turn out like that. But you had parents, they were saying, get our kids in school, get our kids out of masks. And, and you know, these school boards basically said our hands are tied because the state is forcing us to do this. There was a, a lot of people very, very frustrated with the state of Oregon. Well, and, and now, as it turns out, um, you uh, look at the latest information and we were right. Uh, they, yeah. they, they way overstepped their bounds. Uh, you know, the masks didn't work. They don't work. There's still people wearing them in Western Oregon, which just blows my freaking brain. Because yeah. you not even go on the CDC's website that now tells you that. So it's, it's unbelievable. And oh, wait, was that I'm sorry? Did I? No, I know. I guess I didn't hear. I'm sorry. We have not heard. Any, I'm, I'm any, sorry. Yeah, any right. state leaders and for ruining how many businesses and they still have eight hundred thousand dollars in fines against some. And right. the Republicans are trying to get the, the state to to Kotech to just just let it go. I mean, you were wrong. It's done. Leave it alone. So, yeah. so right now in Wallowa County, is this is just your last county that you're you're you need? No. So, yeah. So, so we have a vote that just happened in Willow County. So, so just to, to be clear, none of these countywide votes are necessary to move the border. The only okay. thing that's necessary to move the border is the two states to come together and say, we're going to move the border, but they're not going to do that until they know there's popular support for this idea. Right. So by going county by county, we're going to the people directly and we're saying, do you want your elected leaders to look into moving the border? And, and we're winning in Eastern Oregon. We've won 11 straight. We're winning currently in Wallowa County. It's very close. Um, you know, it's close five now. right now during this. Five recording. votes right now. Five yes. Votes. Tomorrow's the last day that votes can come in. You know, Oregon has such a That's messed so up voting system where the election was last Tuesday, but they can still count ballots as long as they were postmarked. So it's it slowed down to a trickle. And, and it's going to be very close either way. But but what we're doing is we're going to voters and saying, do you want us to move forward with this? And what ele- what voters are telling us is, yes, we're Cause winning. Because on- even if it's five votes, I mean, or three by two or three votes, that's still 50 percent, basically. So right. It's going to be 50 percent. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and it, when you put Willowa County in with the rest of Eastern Oregon counties that have voted, our average is 59 percent. And and that tells you that the people of Eastern Oregon pretty overwhelmingly want their elected leaders to look into this. So, so on all the other elections, I don't recall you guys having some pretty uh, strong uh, haters, some people against what you're doing. Is this the first time and they raise money and I kind of tell people about that? Cause I think this is the first time, isn't it? It is. So this is our 12th vote or 12th County to vote in Eastern Oregon. And up to this point, you know, we are a, um, a general welfare organization and, and we send out informationals and, and we help, you know, get the word out about greater Idaho. And uh, we have had not had any organized opposition. Like like when we've had a, a county having a vote, um, people get our mailers and our information and that's about it. This time in Wallowa County, we actually saw a lot of opposition and it was organized opposition. Some of it, we could track where it was coming from. Some of it was completely done under, you know, under the table, uh, outside of the political rules that we're supposed to have for reporting. Uh, we had mailers coming in. We had TV ads being done. The ones that we know where that money came from was from a group in Portland. Uh, it's a social justice group out of Portland called Western State Strategies. They were spending a lot of money out in Wallowa County uh, to try to influence people on how to vote on greater Idaho. So you're right, Rick, for a long time, they ignored us because they just thought we're this group that's not going anywhere and it's just kind of silly and, you know, whatever. Um, But people see that the people of Eastern Oregon are serious about this and that we have momentum and that we're making progress towards making this happen. And, And so now the opposition is starting to mount and, and, you know, 
we are okay with having opposition. We have a solid argument. We have a solid argument. And when we put that in front of voters, we're not worried that, that we aren't going to win that argument because it makes sense. And voters agree with us, which is why we've won 11 straight elections uh, in Eastern Oregon. So we're not afraid of opposition. Our complaint, and we filed a complaint with the elections division, secretary of state was only that the people of Ulawa County should know who's trying to influence them yep. and, and the people and spending why. money. And, and why? Absolutely. And so the people voting have a right. It's the law that people that are spending money to try to influence them in an election have to report who they are and how much money they're spending. And that wasn't being done. This was a lot of unidentified um, money and influence coming into Ulawa County. God, so you got to wonder where that came from, huh? And what's their motivation? What's it? You know, I mean, so, hey, so if this happens, if when this happens and greater Idaho gets all of you guys, so then that would be considered out of state money. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, so, and to people in Eastern Oregon, Portland is out of state of mind money. Right? Well, that really is it, Ricky. I mean, you, that is what you just said is so true. Portland is hundreds of miles away from Ulawa County. It's a different world. They don't away even from know Ulawa what Ulawa County. County is. Exactly. The, the people that are paying for these ads and running these ads uh, in Ulawa County to try to influence them not to vote for our measure, they don't understand Eastern Oregonians. They don't understand our way of life. They don't share our values. Uh, and, and so, you know, you do have to ask yourself, why do these people that live hundreds of miles away and a completely different value set than us, why do they care so much that they'd be willing to spend so much money to try to influence well, us? Same reason they took a bunch of acreage from the uh, Steens Mountain from one farmer out of social pressure and uh, gave him a bunch of shit land uh, to deal with and took away the beautiful, beautiful gorge that he owned forever. The same way they go in to, to, to shut down the Oahe River to cattle raising when they pollute their own river in Portland and, you know, and, and it, it's, it's so hypocritical and social justice group, social justice for whom? I mean, what do you, what do they even know about social justice? What, what is that that, well, Lowell County has, has neighborly justice. They don't need social justice. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and well, these people, I, I agree. Know them. And I think the people of Ulawa County see through that stuff. And I don't think that they necessarily appreciated that all this money was coming in. But but to your point, we are seeing organized opposition at this point. And, and that just tells us that we are making progress and, and that we are making, you know, real strides towards changing governance for Eastern Oregonians. So next step. So let's say Ulawa County, win, lose, whatever. We, we get then. What's the next step for greater Idaho? Yes. Yeah, so so the next step, so so we still have three counties that haven't had a chance to vote on that yet. And the people in those counties are itching to have their voice heard. Um, so we've got Crook County. The commissioners in Crook County have agreed to put an advisory question on the ballot in Crook County. So that's going to be happening either in this November or next May. Again, we don't have to pass measures in these counties to move the border. But but people in these counties want to have their voice heard. They're coming to us saying, how do we get this on the ballot so that we get a chance to, to tell our elected leaders that we want this to happen? Right. Um, so so that's one of our next steps. We will be back in the next legislative session. So that's the other next big piece for us. We made we have to get through both houses and both senates in Idaho and Oregon to get those two legislatures talking. We made huge strides in Idaho this last session. We got through the House. We were poised to get through the Senate before it stalled out. In Oregon, we've got to make more, more progress. We need people to contact the representatives and their senators and say, we need to have this conversation. The people want to look into this as a solution to the urban-rural divide. So we'll be back in the next legislative session. You know, I'm sure that you're aware of what's going on in the state legislature right now and, and what a mess it is. Oh. And, and that's exactly the problems we're trying to solve. Western Oregon and Eastern Oregon have gotten so different and the culture is so different. We don't see the world the same way. We don't share a lot of, of values at this point. And trying to force our values on each other is not working. And, and it, it's not a tolerable situation, which is why you have all these uh, – Republican legislators that have walked out in the Senate and ground activity in the legislature to a halt. We need to get Western Oregon government that Western Oregon wants. We need to get Eastern Oregon government that they want and, and lower political tension and allow people to live their lives and, and in their communities the best way they see fit. 
You know, the problem is though, Matt, um, every time I do a show on this, I get people commenting on my website and they'll say, we're in Albany, we want to join. We're in Lebanon, we want to join. Brownsville wants to go. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like, <clears throat> I think there's, this is a start. I, I, I hope what would happen is once this happened, <clears throat> that maybe those being elected and those living in Western Oregon could start going, oh, wait a minute. The people's voice really does matter. We don't have to put up with Oregon. We can once again be part of Oregon. And I think, cause I was listening to that, this podcast this morning and I was telling you about it earlier. And it was like, I, I think there's a lot more, it's like an iceberg. There's these people on the top that make a lot of noise and they set an agenda for Oregon. And then people are too afraid to go against it and say, but I don't want more bike paths. I don't care. I don't ride my bike. How many people really ride their bike on a bike path? I don't care about all the recycling. I know I learned because China rejected it all. They were just dumping it in the ocean. So it's a it's bullshit. And you're spending how much money for me to recycle this stuff? And these are all sacred cows. But to right. mention those and mention the truth and say it's not working, then you're going to get bombarded with people who are going, wait, that's sacred to me. And, and I think there's, there's going to be a move where people, the pendulum is starting to creeping slowly, but it's starting to come back. And by you guys giving that voice to all these Eastern Oregons, Oregonians who've had to be quiet for so long, I think it's going to be... Uh, life-changing for the rest of Oregon too. I mean, I think you'll see some movement everywhere because when you have a house and a huge chunk of it wants to leave home, you got to look at the parents and say, something's not working at the parenting level because <laughs> there's a dysfunctional, it's like every business I've ever worked for. If there was dysfunction in the business, it started at the top. Yeah. And, and Oregon, it has a dysfunctional relationship right now between the east and the west so we need to either fix it and figure out a way to get policy and government to each side of the state that they want or they need to let us go and they need yeah. to let people go get that government from idaho so matt how do people get a hold of you if they're interested in joining talking about it getting you out to speak to their group oh wait real fast to get me that but you said it's three counties so you had Crick county what were the other two gilliam county and umatilla county also have not voted yet on our measure and then uh, then otherwise all the eastern oregon counties that we're looking to move the full counties have already voted and they voted positively Okay, so how do they get a hold of you and, and information? Yeah, so if they go to greateridaho.org, greateridaho uh, they can sign up for our email, get on our social media, uh, donate. Um, they can write me directly, Matt at Greater Idaho. I'm always happy to do presentations and come out and talk to people. You know, people need to get involved. If they want to see change, they need to get involved. And I can tell you, Rick, you know, having done this now for a while, elected leaders do listen. They, they do. When they hear from enough people, it moves them. And, yeah. and so, you know, if people want to know how do we get our elected leaders to move this ball forward, how do we get them to, you know, start trying to find solutions to this problem? They need to contact them. They need to tell them what they want them to do. And, and they'll be responsive if enough people do that. Have you talked to Betsy Johnson? I, so I have not talked to Betsy Johnson, although Betsy Johnson has talked a lot about us. Uh, and, and I would love to talk to Betsy Johnson and, and reach out to her because she seems like somebody who understands the, yeah. the, the rural urban divide in a way that not everybody on the west side of the state does. Um, we have reached out to Governor Kotek. We have invited her. You know, she's on a listening tour across this, this state and, and has um, pledged to go to all 36 counties and and have events. We've invited her to meet us anywhere in Eastern Oregon. Uh, we will host an event and have a conversation with her because what we're really trying to do is we're trying to get people a government that works for them and, and that they want. We're trying to solve a problem. We think moving the border is the best solution because it gives Western Oregon what they want, Eastern Oregon what they want, Idaho gets, gets something out of it also. We think that's the best solution, but you know, there may be other solutions. We're willing to talk about that, um, but we got to have a seat at the table and, and have people that are willing to listen. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I will get your contact information to Betsy. She's a good friend of mine. And, I would love uh, that. Yeah. That'd oh, be awesome. She, yeah. She will. Yeah. Great. Betsy yeah. on your side is a really good thing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Matt, Matt McCall, thanks again for updating us on this. And uh, man, go. For, I love what you're doing. I think this is super important. I mean, I think this is not just a movement. I think this is really groundbreaking. And, um, you know, I, who knows what's going to happen with all of it, but it matters. It really does matter.
Well, thank you, Rick, for, for bringing us on and, and, you know, giving us a platform and, and being supportive um, because, you know, again, the people are ready for a solution. We think this is a good one uh, and we'll, we'll keep pushing forward to advocate for the people. All right. Matt McCaw, Greater Idaho. Thanks for being with us, man. Yep. Thanks, Rick. See you later. Uh -huh. So again, uh, Greater Idaho Movement, that's the update where it's going. Um, the great news is they have some opposition. So that means out of Eastern Oregon staters, these are people from Portland claiming to want social justice for themselves, probably not for anybody else, and coming in and trying to ramrod what's going on in, in Eastern Oregon. So uh, don't let it happen. Um, you know, but that means they're making some headway. So a long way to go, and they need your support if you like the idea. If you don't like the idea, hey, I'm totally cool with that. But if you do, you need to get involved. I want to thank our sponsors again, Chris Daniel Family Dentistry, where everyone is welcome. Um, also, Montana Oral Surgeons and Implant Center. Um, it was an Oregon story, but you know what? I think uh, people all over the West are super interested in this. So we want to thank them. And also Fairway Mortgage, uh, Greg Hinkle, if you're looking to to buy a house. This guy knows how to help you. If you're coming from Oregon or Washington or going to Oregon and Washington or Montana, he's licensed in all three so he can help you out. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, we will be back next week. I'll be back from my conference and we'll tell you all about it. And we'll have uh, a whole lot. I've already got a whole lineup of shows for the next week. Have a good night.